Good afternoon, my fellow Americans. Wait a minute. That's, that's, Barack, that's Barack Obama's line. Sorry. All right. So, 22 municipalities and 3,500 employees. Hey, that's Joe D's line. Sorry about that. Oh, you guys are not feeling it. Come on. Get up. See, I'm not, I'm not good with the jokes. I need Chris Durkin up here. Anyway, first of all, let me invite you to this great celebration that we're having today. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank the county exec. Um, he is a person who, you know, there's, there's a slogan that we have here, which is, you know, the slogan is putting Essex County first. And with a lot of slogans, you know that there's rhetoric, a lot of rhetoric involved. But I think over the years that he's been our administrator, I think that our executive, I think that we know that he has, through effective leadership, transformed this county into one of the best counties in the state. And I think there's no doubt about that. We see it in our parks, we see it in our budget, because we balance the budget every year. And prior to his administration coming in, that wasn't taking place here in this county. And so I think he deserves a big round of applause. And And more so because he's a great supporter of all Latinos, and that's why he's here today, okay? Um, Joe, I know you have a busy schedule, so I, do you want to speak now? And, Sure. Not too worse than my jokes. <laughs> First of all, good evening to everyone, and thank you all for coming. He stole my line, the freeholder. You know, like I say, we say we have uh, uh, 22 municipalities, 3,500 county workers, and 800,000 residents, and our strength in our county is our diversity. I want to congratulate the freeholders, all the freeholders, on having this celebration. I believe this is the first. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, and. I mean, <laughs> I want to congratulate you. I mean, you've been selected by the freeholders uh, in, in this position, and uh, to me, it's, it's a great honor. And I want to thank you all because the reason this county is the way it is is because of our diversity and our strength, and we're here to make sure that everybody gets represented. You know, I want you all to know too. I've been going to Puerto Rico ever since Teresa, 1981. I just want you to know that I have I an extra. first grade, so I can't Fifty percent of me, not like you, uh, freeholder. Oh. I'm Puerto Rican. Sure about Guaynabo is my hometown. Oh. Junior Cruz, who used to be the coach of the JC Dolls. I will never ever forget that. And now, of course, Hector O'Neill is the mayor there and do a great job in Guaynabo. But. Uh, you know, the important thing there is in the last 35 years, we brought a team from the city of Newark to compete on the island of Puerto Rico. Not only in baseball, we've done it in softball, we've done it in basketball, and we continue to have that relationship. But we're here to honor all the Hispanics throughout Essex County. So I just want to congratulate you and, you know, uh, congratulate you, Free Elder, for making sure that it stay happens. Congratulations. We have great Hispanic male leaders, but one female Hispanic leader that is making her mark on the legislator, as a legislator, uh, is none other than you know Senator Teresa Ruiz. Uh, the the one thing that I find most important in her cause is that she chairs the Education Committee for the Senate. Let me tell you something. That is not an easy job. We all know how challenging education is. We're dealing with budgets. We're dealing with constraints. We're dealing with laws that have been in place over 50 years that really should not apply anymore. And she has paved the way with new laws regarding tenure and teacher performance. You know, not everybody's supposed to like it, but I guarantee that it will make a better educational system. So without further ado, Senator Teresa Ruiz. Good evening, everyone. 
Thank you, Freeholder, for really launching the first annual Latino Heritage uh, Series here to be part of the commemorative ceremonies that we have um, when we celebrate the greatest asset that we have in Essex County, and quite frankly, the greatest asset in this country, and that's our diversity. I think the county executive is humbled when he, when he says his connection to Puerto Rico. Quite frankly, the reason I became the first Puerto Rican and the first Latina elected to state government was because I had mentors like our county executive, Joe D. If you ask him, I know there's a lot of Latino reporters in the room, what his legacy is, he will quickly tell you that it is balancing the budget for Essex County. And I would fight with him and say his legacy is truly that of a leader. A leader recognizes where his great capacities are and where there is need for improvement. And he creates a table that really includes everyone. And when I mean include, I mean people of all ages and people of all backgrounds. And that's truly what makes good government work. When I look to, I guess, I, I have a connection to every honoree here this, this evening, but when I look to Louis Masanave, who's really worked alongside my husband in the fields that our county executive first launched the first, um, you know, in collaborative with the Roberto Clemente League and the North Ward Little League, uh, to remind myself what those fields look like before he was the county executive, to see what they are today, they outsurpass any suburban field in this great state. But most importantly, that the mission that he drove home, which was to create positive recreational outlets for our children, has been the number one component of what the, the organizations continue to do today. We have people here who have committed themselves to economic development, who help strengthen Essex County that way, individuals who through their crafts in journalism continue to evoke and capture the stories, but most importantly, all of you are community activists. And when it comes time to get together behind a unified universal message, we are all here to celebrate, to strengthen, and empower. I will be running out, as the freeholder said uh, this uh, evening, my mission is to ensure that the child who doesn't have a voice in the state has one in me. I'm not a biological mother, but I am responsible for a million plus in the state. And it is open house in most of our schools in Newark, so I am running in and out of buildings, welcoming our teachers back, and most importantly, encouraging our parents to really stay strong and work alongside of all of us so that every student in this great city gets a chance. When Barack Barack Obama became president, he took away the quotations from the American dream, and now it's our responsibility to ensure that every child has that opportunity. And that means from K through 12 and beyond. We have dreamers in the state, and I am leading that charge, and hopefully in state tuition will be at the forefront of our agenda moving forward in the next legislative session. So thank you and congratulations to all of you, and Freeholder, thank you for launching in the first annual, and to the Freeholder colleagues for joining us here in celebration. Thank you very much. So, you know, we have some great leaders, like I said, and I come from a camp that I'm very proud of. You know, I come from the North Ward, where, you know, one of the staples in that ground is the North Ward Center, uh, primarily Steve Adubato and Fran Adubato and now the exec, Adrian Davis, but I can tell you that over 40 years, Steve and Fran have dedicated that center to progress the lives of all the individuals that come through those doors. There's no doubt about that. Whatever your politics is, and they're different, and it's okay to disagree, you can never challenge the fact what he has done for Latinos. He has created leaders, he has trained leaders, and he's provided more jobs and more services to Latinos in this city than any other person I know, okay? And uh, unfortunately, they couldn't be here today, but I know that we're thinking about them because they've given us so many opportunities, okay? Um, I also want to thank, hi honey, <laughs> that's, the, that's mine, unfortunately. <laughs> She's a loud one. Um, you know, uh, another, you know, people that I want to mention is I do want to thank the Freeholder President, Blani Watson. She will be joining us shortly. Um, and um, I want to thank Freeholder Clerk, Davis Ford, and uh, Deputy Clerk. And, you know, today couldn't have happened without their support. 
Everyone here today is, an, and, and by the way, I'm putting them before the freeholders because you guys didn't do anything. They did all the work, you know. Um, but they did an amazing job putting this event together. And this is the first, and I guarantee you next time, Joe, we're going to probably have it downstairs because we're going to get big and we're going to help really celebrate our heritage. Um, so I just want to recognize them all and thank you. You know, from the bottom of my heart, you guys do an incredible job. And I'm, I, am, I am grateful and honored. Okay. Um, I also want to thank my freeholder colleagues. They did nothing for this. No, I'm just kidding. No, they helped. They helped me pick my uh, honorees. And uh, you know, these are young men. Uh, the rest will be joining us soon. And uh, together, we're learning a lot about uh, each other, about our districts, um, the different geography of our districts and, and the economies of our districts. And I, I think together, not because we're young, because you know, young people don't have all the answers and we make a lot of mistakes, I think, but just because we have the energy to get there. We have the energy to try and do good for everybody else and not just ourselves. And so I just want to present Freeholder Luciano <laughs> and uh, Freeholder Brendan Gill. Um, I also want to recognize my wife Charlotte for being an incredible wife and putting up with me. Uh, she doesn't like my schedule, but uh, you know she's an incredible person who, without her support, I wouldn't be able to help as many people as I do. So Charlotte, can you please stand up? And she is holding our baby Carolina, and I have the other two gang members over here. Uh, yeah, hi. <laughs> they're, they're, they're a handful, let me tell you. Um, so, Amelie and Alexandra, I love you both and thank you for joining me. This, is, this makes it even more special for me. So, so, let me start by saying this. My name is Rolando Bovadilla. I'm District Freeholder for District 1, which represents about 158,000 people. Okay? That's, that's a tough job, but it's also an honor. And for me, it's a calling because I get to do what I like to do, which is I get to help people. Um, sometimes not with all the results that I want, but if you know me and you've asked for my help, sometimes you know, I'm able to get there, okay? And with the help of some of my colleagues and other resources and the exec, we're able to, we're able to make things happen, okay? Um, so last year, I wrote the resolution to make this event possible. I think, you know, the fact that we can memorialize and celebrate this for as long as this body of government is, is around, I think that's exceptional. Not because I created the resolution, just because you all have an outlet to come and celebrate together, okay? Because it's not about strictly Dominican or Puerto Rican or Ecuadorians and Peruvians. It's really about one heritage, you know? And we get to celebrate together, we can come and celebrate all our cultures, okay? And that's why I created the resolution, okay? We Hispanics here in the city, in the state, in the county, and in the nation, we are the fastest growing population, okay? The fastest. Um, we have men and women in every faucet of government private and non-private companies, leading edge industries, we have entrepreneurs, we have homeowners, we have business owners. I mean, we've, we've come a long ways. And as this population continues to increase, we're gonna make our mark. And you know, with good leadership, we hope to make a good mark on that. Uh, I wanna acknowledge my other freeholder uh, member, Clark, please stand up. Mm -hmm. So, let me tell you some negative things, okay? Unfortunately, there are those in our community that look to destroy instead of bond. September 5th, my, my title was included in a newspaper, okay? Because, quote, I was a Honduran freeholder, right? To me, I think yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. If you want to make a cause and you want to make a challenge for a political slot, I say bring on a qualified individual, bring in an individual that can do the service, 
right? Not rhetoric, not talk, not race, okay? You know, I think people who are racist are weak and cowardly because if you put something on print, I want you to do one thing. If you put something on print that's racist, I want you to turn to my kids one day and say the words that you've said in that paper. Chances are you won't say it because it's weak and cowardly. Any form of racism in this world, be race, color, religion, sexual orientation, whatever the cause, it's immoral, okay? So, you know, you want to preach that, try preaching that to God and see how he's going to feel about that. I don't think that was his desire in all of us. Um, but you know, but I look around this room and I am blessed to see that we come from so many varied places with great histories and cultures and food and you heard the music, you know, it's incredible. I mean, we are, we are worldwide, we have a far reach that it keeps extending day by day. And, you know, I just want to share with you some of those people who've made that reach in our community, okay? So, without further ado, I'm going to ask my three young ladies to come up and do the Pledge of Allegiance for us, okay? Now, we have, you know, some individuals in the audience that I think we should recognize for their public service, for de dedication. Yes. And uh, before we do that, <laughs> thank you, we're going to have the singing of the Star Spangled Banner by Kathy Brown. Rise, please. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, wow, Kathy, incredible, incredible voice. So, um, you know, I just want to announce my freeholder colleague Rufus Johnson joined us. And, um, you know, I want to announce some of the individuals that are here today. Um, Sheriff Armando Fontura was with us today, so I want to, I want to actually say them all, and then we'll give them a round of applause at the end, okay? Because, you know, we started a little bit late, so we got to get going, all right? So, <laughs> Sheriff Armando Fontura, William Narvaez, the Deputy Register of Deeds and Mortgages, we have Liliana Rodriguez, Chief of Staff to Aníbal Ramos, Councilman, and Jesus Casiano, Jr., aide. Dr. Kerry Washington, Pastoral Care Hospital Center. Thank you. We have Ralph Chilela, our County Administrator. Sharifa Salam, the Deputy Freeholder Council. Thank you for joining us. We have Dr. Michael Festa, the Essex County Health Officer. Dave Padilla, North Ward Democratic Co-Chair. Alan Abramowitz, Deputy County Administrator. Dominic Scaglione, oh, I always say that wrong. Scaglione, Inspector General. Carolyn Murray, who is the Essex County Prosecutor. Jesus Padilla, who's, in, who's you know, very much part of this celebration because he's been around in this county for so long. He's the undersheriff, and I see my friend, Director Ortiz from the Department of Corrections back there. Thank you. We also have... <laughs> no, we also have the Honorable Hector Corchado, former councilman, and one person that is on his way, he might be coming a little bit late, is Councilman Louis Quintana, so I'll just mention his name right now. And we do have representatives from Aníbal Ramos' office here, which will be um, giving out commendations along with me at the end to all the honorees. So I thank him for his devotion to our community as well. Okay? Um, so without further ado, I'm going to do this a little bit different because usually I go ahead and read about the person, and, but it's nothing like you getting to know the person firsthand. Okay? So I want to do right now is I want to call up two individuals who are significantly making a mark for and putting the Dominican community on the map. Um, and they're going to tell you about something that they did with the governor's office to memorialize something of their own, like this event. Uh, that person is Aníbal Alcántara, Jr., and my friend Santiago Paniagua. Aníbal Alcántara is a business leader. He's worked in management throughout his career. He's also a very strong community activist and volunteer. And one thing I know about Aníbal is he always will say what's on his mind. No matter how hard you try to tell him not to, he'll still say it. But uh, one thing about a person like that is that you, know, you, you kind of have to respect because when he says something, you know it's coming from the core of his heart, and he really means what he says. Um, another great individual, and I'm going to let you guys talk in a second, is uh, Santiago Paniagua, who I met maybe about two years ago. Um, he has proven to me that what he provides to our community is undoubtedly a great service of information, and he really cares more about his community and is passionate about community. And that's something you kind of look for in an individual. Um, and so saying that, I want them to share with us what they did this past summer and uh, how they managed to get something done. So. Thank you, Freeholder Bobadilla. Uh, good evening, everyone. A lot of beautiful faces here tonight. That's wonderful. Um, I want to thank uh, Freeholder Bobadilla for putting this together, being the first event. And I'm sure, like he said before, the next one is going to be much, much larger. 
uh, all the other freeholders that are here. Uh, Rufus, <laughs> uh, great to see you guys. Uh, all the honorees, uh, I uh, congratulate you. Uh, for me, obviously, it's an honor. Um, I am someone who uh, tries to do what he can uh, when someone asks uh, for help. Uh, I've been involved in the community for many years. Um, been a resident of Newark, uh, uh, well, came to Newark uh, 34 years ago. And uh, so I know Newark uh, a little bit. Uh, and most of the work that I do, I'm my partner in crime here, Santiago Paniagua, uh, is in the city of Newark. Uh, we do get involved in uh, cities like Perth Amboy, Passaic, Patterson, uh, anywhere where um, there are Latinos uh, that want to do things to uh, make positive changes in the community. Uh, we always say present. Um, Usually, uh, uh, Rolando, we're the ones giving awards, as you know. <laughs> um, you know, we believe that it's important to uh, uh, expose those leaders that we have in the community that are doing fantastic work uh, and letting everyone know uh, of the good work that they're doing. Uh, Santiago and I try to make sure that uh, we capture that. And, and we believe that, you know, we do a lot of things with the Dominican community, but, you know, we always uh, integrate all the other communities uh, some of the awards that we put out uh, certainly, uh, you know, uh, recognizes uh, the value and, 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 and the efforts of other communities. Uh, with that, I, well, you want me to talk about what we did? <laughs> I usually don't talk this much, guys, okay? <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, this, this, past, yeah, this, this past July, uh, we actually did something that uh, for the Dominican community uh, is really historical. Um, and, uh, you know, we're proud of that. Uh, we were able to get uh, the second Saturday of every July to be uh, recognized as Dominican Pride Day in the state of New Jersey. And, uh, thank you. Thanks. And, uh, you know, next year, uh, we're working with the Senate right now, the U.S. Senate, and we're looking to have that date recognized throughout the United States. Um, you know, we're also working, uh, we actually got, uh, uh, thanks to uh, Orlando uh, and the freeholders uh, and the county executive, uh, we got the uh, uh, Park Avenue uh, between Lake Street and, and Roseville Avenue uh, to be named Republica Dominicana Way. So we're very proud of that. Uh, and, and, and it happened because of the efforts of, you know, Orlando and the freeholders. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to call uh, my partner, Santiago Paniagua, my great friend. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I just want to say thank you to everyone, and I am uh, so honored to be here. I'm standing before you saying that it's not what we bring to the community. It's the opportunity that the community gave it to us to bring something and make the difference. It's no uh, what are we doing? It's the opportunity to help other. It's the opportunity to share with my family. Uh, as uh, Rolando says, I have a, the architect of my life with me. We just last Monday we gave 30 years married. Uh, my 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 dear Julia Castro with me. And I will share this moment. But <clears throat> to work with the community and to uh, have the support with a lot of people, like the freeholder board, uh, uh, a special person like uh, Jesse Padilla. Uh, I have to mention Hector Corchado, who was the first uh, one to say, you know what? I believe in your leadership, and you have a hand here. Um, uh, help me walk throughout Newark when we came from New York uh, 17 years ago. And um, to find Newark, and this is uh, kind of difficult to hear people say it. For me and my family, Newark has been the promised land. Because when we came from New York with my little kids, I have nothing. And everything have the Lord have given to me has been in Newark. So I believe in Newark. I fight for this community, 
and I know what is to come to the city without something and find people like Rolando, like those uh, leaders that I mentioned, to be all the time in your side helping you to do that. And I want to say something to uh, Rolando. As a journalist, uh, our function is not to demolish nobody. Um, whatever person in charge to the information, uh, it can be a newspaper, it could be a, a TV program show, it could be a radio show, and you use this uh, way to break somebody in your community, you demolish yourself. We have, according to the last census, 43,000 Dominicans in the city of North. I think we're a little more than that. And I gotta tell you, Rolando, and the whole audience, this whole community has belonged to you. Because what we have to do in our community is to build connection, is to build friendship, is to build uh, uh, effort, is to say uh, the African American community, the white community, the Latinos, everybody has to come together in order to do something good and changing in our community. So thank you very much, and you have our support, and we're behind to you 100%. You know Ronnie right now, both me and my newspaper endorsing you all the way. <laughs> That's not the reason why he's up here, <laughs> but, but I, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, you know, we have, an acknowledgement here from um, our Senator, Teresa, from the North Ward Councilman, Aníbal Ramos, who unfortunately couldn't join us today, but we know that in spirit he's with us, and from myself. I got, I got the nice ring. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to give this to you, Aníbal. And to you, my friend. Thank you, everybody. You guys, uh, but um, you know, they're getting they're getting paper and a frame, um, which is really doesn't do what they do, um, you know. But I hope that when they look again, they they put it in their hearts to continue their mission. Okay, thank you. Um, one person, the one person I know least from the group, but when our friend Diego gave me her story, I was like, you know, I was taken back, Diego. I mean, you're talking about a well-accomplished individual, a person who has worked for Telemundo for what, over 20 years now? Okay. Um, who left Telemundo, did her own documentaries, and you even won an Emmy Award, correct? On your documentary. Okay, so why don't you come up, Angelica Guerra, and uh, please just share with us your experience. Okay. Well, I don't think I have that much to say, with all said by you. Um, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Rolando Bobadilla, and all the Board of Freeholders. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be here today in celebration of the Hispanic Heritage Month. And I would like to receive this recognition on behalf of the, the Ecuadorian um, professionals who work in different areas, uh, in different industries, uh, such as medicine, education, uh, law. And I'm so proud of my community and all the Latin American community, and I'm so happy to be here. Um, yes, I worked for uh, Telemundo for many years. I've been working for Univision. And I don't think I did much with my career, but I tried um, to, to help our community. And I did so many documentaries, and I could see in my travels that all the necessities that we have in our countries. And therefore, I take advantage of, like you said, I have to take the opportunity to serve the community. 
not not to be like uh, my objective is not just to receive honors but to serve our community and in those travels I see that um, that our communities our countries need our help and if we can help our community here that I think that's a platform to help our communities in our countries um, I don't like I said I don't have much to say I'm new in this so Thank you so much. Well, I had um, the Emmy Award documentary was uh, Guatemala, La Joya de Centro America. Also, the one nominated was uh, Peru, Tierra de los Incas. And recently, uh, recently we did a Trece Bactum, La Predicción Maya, which is a documentary of the Mayan prophecies. Uh, I also, I also would like to dedicate the, this, uh, this recognition to my three children and my husband. Also, I would like to thank Diego Munoz, who's the president of the Chamber of Commerce of the American Ecuadorian community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, she's, she's very humble. You should see this. <laughs> you know, documentaries, I mean, um, she has even inspired to get responses back from some of the governments that she has, you know, uh, produced some of these documentaries from. And when you can inspire that kind of response, you know you're doing a well job. Um, so my other honoree is uh, George Gutierrez. Now, George Gutierrez has been around Newark for a very long time. Um, you know, he graduated from Our Lady of Good Counsel. He has been a community activist for as long as anybody knows him. Um, he has worked for the city of Newark in various capacities as, you know, commissioner on the city zoning board and um, the affirmative action office. I mean, and he's also a business owner. So when you talk about the impact that Latinos make on, you know, the economy, he's one of those individuals, okay? And in 1991, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce named the Merchant of the Year, okay? So without further ado, I'd like to bring George Gutierrez up. Well, I, today I would like to thank Rolando for this great honor and the Board of Pro Chosen Freeholders for honoring me today. It's a great honor to be in business in Essex County. And like Rolando said, Joe D has done an excellent job. And you know, I love the city of Newark. I've been here all my life. And my businesses have been here. And thanks to everyone and some of my mentors that are here that have always supported me, helped me, like Hector Colchado, one of my mentors, and other freeholders, Rufus, that has always been there for me, Rolando, that has always been here for me and my co-workers that have always supported me. I want to say thank you. It's a great honor to accept this award and thank you. So we have a, a now I'm going to break this up a little bit because I want us to you know, stop talking and enjoy a little bit of music. So we have a performer here with us today. His name is Mino de America, and you are going to love him, okay? So. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. Can we, you know, I, I just noticed that our councilman joined us. Would you like to say a few words? This is Anibal Ramos, North Ward Councilman. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's always nice to be back at home here at the County of Essex, uh, but I just came by today uh, simply to extend my congratulations uh, to all the honorees. Many of you, you know, have had the pleasure to work with uh, over the years in various capacities, and, and you truly are uh, making, you know, the city of Newark, the County of Essex proud in your respective contributions. And to uh, Freeholder uh, Bobadilla, I want to thank him and, and also congratulating him 
uh, for, for taking on this initiative of highlighting, you know, different leaders that we have in the Hispanic community, whether we look at the press, uh, entertainment, the business community, and also uh, someone who's dedicated uh, his life to, to uh, Little League sports and, and, and recreation, and, and to uh, Diego, who's involved uh, with the uh, parade as well. And, and good to see you here, George. Uh, one of our longtime merchants. I, I'm just here to offer my congratulations to you all, and, and what makes our city and our, our county strong is truly our diversity. So thank you for your opening. So uh, I, I had to interrupt it because he's a dynamic young man, good leader, and so now that we've got through that, uh, let's get the <laughs> singer back here. You know the America. <laughs> Our applause. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very glad to be here and for share a little bit of music. Por ese palpitar que tiene tu mirar y yo me lo Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, for this time. Uh, I prefer to uh, without the microphone because uh, the sound uh, and, and the music is so low, you know? That's why. So, now, <laughs> I, I want to invite you.
So now it's Kathy and him that make me look bad because I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're an incredible artist. Oh, thank you thank, so much. Thank, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thank you. you know, well, it's my pleasure. Okay. Um, one more person that I see here in the audience is uh, George Torres, who is the president of the Hispanic Law Enforcement. Okay. Thank you for joining us. So the next individual, you know, he was recommended by um, a dear friend of mine. I, I know Louie, but not in the capacity that a friend of mine knows him. And he said, you know, you got to honor this guy. This guy's been around. Uh, he has dedicated his life to the recreation of youth and youth development. And um, I think it's over 25 years, right? 27 years, you know. He was instrumental with the Roberto Clemente Little League, which he still participates in to this day. Uh, he's probably not as fast as he used to be, but, uh, but, he's a good, but he's a good coach. You know, he's a great mentor, and he's a great leader for all these kids that need a good leader nowadays. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Louis Maisonado. <laughs> He loves to dance. Yeah. <laughs> Next event, you'll see. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, first, let me just say I'm, um, I'm very humbled. And quite frankly, I'm a little embarrassed also to be uh, honored here today. I see uh, this distinguished group of honorees here. And I'm, I, I must say I am honored to be part of this group. But me personally, I, I don't, um, I don't do it for recognition. People know that. People know I've been behind the scenes for 27 years or whatever. But that's what I like. That's my passion. Uh, a little quick story. Years ago, before there was a Roberto Clemente Little League and before there was a Rick Sarone Little League, there was a, a league named uh, Carmen Chanel Little League. And uh, I want to acknowledge um, this one coach who took this uh, troubled and very shy 10-year-old and took him under his wing. And uh, he, he mentored that, that young boy, molded him, made him the person that he is today. And his name is Robert McCoy. I'll never forget him. Uh, he was instrumental. He was a mentor to me, uh, which got me to do what I'm doing now. It's so important. I think it's basically everybody's here moral uh, obligation to give back to our youth in some way, you know, or another. If it's mentoring, if it's uh, taking that uh, 
wayward uh, teenager in the neighborhood that you, you see that's slightly going the other way, it's our moral obligation. I really believe in that, and that's why I do what I do, uh, but I don't do it, like I said, for the recognition, but I am honored today to be part of this group here, which is the first uh, annual uh, uh, Essex County Hispanic Heritage Month. I want to give thanks first and foremost to people that, that, that brought my name up, even though, you know, uh, is Tave Padilla here? Yeah, okay, that's Tave. Thank you, Tave. I, uh, I want to acknowledge my family because family, without family, there's really nothing. And even if you're not in bloodlines with family, but if you're part of a community, you are family. And I want to acknowledge my, my good friend, Dave Guzman, who took the time out to come here today. My little mentee over there, Mr. Jordan Rosado. My, my, my son, Stephen, uh, Louis Jr., my daughter, Jenny, and especially my wife of 36 years. I don't know if you uh, read my bio, but uh, got married pretty young. I know I still look like I'm 36 years old. But uh, that's my lovely wife over here, Myrna. Take a bow. I also want to acknowledge uh, Rolando Bobadilla for, um, for organizing this thing and the entire Board of Chosen Freeholders. Uh, it's a great uh, activity. Um, uh, glad, I'm glad we didn't have to pay for the entertainment today, but uh, <laughs> the entertainment was very, very good so far. And uh, the only thing I have to uh, leave uh, before I go sit down is I want to challenge everybody here, all right, and, and, and do, you know, and, and be a mentor, whoever that child may be, you know. You will know it'll knock on the door for you. And, uh, and together we can become a, a great community and, uh, and hopefully uh, a great city in Newark. Thank you very much. Honoree is actually a person I know quite well. This honoree, you know, when, when I'm going through tough times, you know, this honoree comes to me and she says, you know, Orlando, we lo tenemos que hacer. We got to get it done, you know. And she has inspired me, you know, the way people inspire you, the way Louis was talking about having a mentor. Um, she believes in people. She believes that, that in people are inherently good and they mean well for their community. Um, not just singular groups and races, but all of us alike. Um, she was a business owner here in Newark. She had a restaurant for over 20 years. She's a uh, community activist. And let me tell you, she she will knock on any door, any time, anywhere. Uh, even if you're the opposition, she'll come, she'll come by and she'll try and get like a sign on the door or something. But um, the, the one thing I can tell you about her is that you know, we're connected like family. Um, and I have a great amount of respect for her. So Nieves Ramos, would you please come up? Hello, everybody. Oh, my God. I'm very so proud for me. Rolando, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. I know you my family, and thank you very much. You know, just, just recently, um, her father was, you know, very ill, and there was not a day that she was not next to that bed, you know, um, which, you know, people forget. Sometimes they forget about family, especially as they get older. You know, I hope my kids never forget, but let me tell you, Nieves, every single day, every single hour, you were right there 
And let me tell you, he loves you for that. He really does, and I know that. Um, you know, our next honoree is um, Oscar Rodriguez Sr. And I met Oscar a couple of years ago. My girls needed some exercise because they came home with way too much energy. So I had to diffuse that. Um, so I got him enrolled in the Just One Soccer League. And um, when you meet individuals who work seven days a week, right? Because their job is, especially if you're dealing with kids after school, on the weekends, you're never home. Your home becomes, you know, these kids and their families and the coaches become a part of you, an extension of everything that you stand for and your being. And uh, this individual um, is talented in his craft. He's an amazing administrator, a great coach, and uh, I, I tell you, I'm impressed with him. And, um, you know, we're going to be working together very closely as, you know, time goes on in the near future because I want to make sure that your league is around for a very long time because, you know, our kids, they need, they need positive outlets. They really do, you know. After 3 o'clock, some kids go home and their babysitter becomes their TV or their PlayStation. That's unacceptable, you know. He teaches them something about that. He teaches them about discipline, about being moral, and about doing just things. Uh, so I want to bring up, you know, my friend Oscar Rodriguez. Up. Good evening, everybody. I have, uh, you know, this is the worst place that you can be. <laughs> you, can be you can be in front of 700 uh, kids uh, and every, any given day, and that is not a problem. But uh, when you deal with adults, scary. Orlando, <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Um, the Essex County Freeholders, thank you for and uh, also our good friend, Joe DiVincenzo, the uh, county executive, for um, bringing the family together. You know, um, these are the moments where actually uh, you, you think about it and uh, you start measuring um, how much you've been doing all this time and uh, you see the effort is there. Uh, 18 years ago, um, there was a an ad in the newspaper looking for volunteer coaches. I got involved because my kid, didn't, thinking in his future, didn't have a program that kind of identify himself. Well, he's American, he doesn't like soccer, but I do. <laughs> so I have to create some, some kind of environment where eventually there is gonna be uh, son and dad moment. So we started 18 years ago with a group of 50 kids. We set it up a, an environment that every single parent looked for, safe. We looked for good people willing to put up extra time after work hours, okay, to help those kids create some kind of path that helped them in their lives. And we've been doing, we have now hundreds of volunteers that commitment, their commitment every single season to help these kids, to help guide them through a good path, to take them away from those dangerous streets, to offer them more opportunities. I'm so proud the work that you guys doing it because you also are our partners because your facilities allow us to keep working, offering opportunities. Guys, you're doing a, a fabulous job. We used to play in dirt, where, the, where fields were used to be uh, lagoons. We actually used to fold our pants up and get some buckets and take the water out until, you know, 
Essex County freeholders, Joe, decided to build this uh, state-of-the-art facilities for the kids, for the coaches, for the people that's willing to support, for the people that's willing to uh, provide opportunities to our kids, make, you know, make the path easy to do it. I'm honored to share this room with you guys because each of us represents something in our community. And every single one of us is looking to do something positive for our next generations. I want to share this honor to, with my family, my three kids, my wife, that actually has put up with this for 23 years. She didn't like, when, she, uh, uh, when I started working, she didn't like soccer. Now she's coach. She runs the league. <laughs> you know, that's how much this program is going I have my three kids that they are coaches, they are mentors. And now, with uh, my sister, my mother, everybody, you know, uh, you know, throwing them in. You know, it's family. It's just helping, getting family together, good time. That's the perfect time, you know. That's, you know, priceless, what I said. Um, right now, we have uh, our new program that we will be able to partner with this national organization. It is called Up to Us. And now we have our mentor coaches, kids that start with us back in the days when they were five, six years old. Now they are coaches. Coaches mentoring the next generation of leaders. Um, I would like to recognize them. That is the group from Legacy. Come on, guys. This group is go from now on. This group uh, is going to be working year round, not only uh, developing their skill on the sport, but as well as the mentorship, leadership, uh, how to do fundraising. Um, they actually are going to be uh, taking over the league eventually because I want to retire at what time? It's good to retire, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, again. Um, the only thing that I can, I, I can say is keep us supporting us because you are doing a great job. We need you, um, not only us as, as uh, administrator of the program, but them, especially them. Always thinking of them because there is so many of them out there. They, they don't have too many opportunities and you have to always thinking of them. Thank you very much. I moved to Newark about 10 years ago. From first, I lived in Brooklyn for about 22 years. Then I lived in, in Manhattan. And then we drove by Forest Hill section of Newark, and my wife just happened to like a house. It sounds like a story. I know there's a movie like it, but we actually knocked on the door, and about four months later, we owned the house. Telling you the truth. Um, circumstances, right? They just happen in a particular way sometimes. And one of the first individuals I met when I moved here was my friend Esther Tanyas. Now, Esther has an incredible history in her craft. She started out in a basement office next to Pueblo Supermarket. So if you go by the docking bay of Pueblo Supermarket, You'll see a sign, faded old sign, right, that says Esther Insurance. Um, she started there. I think we had a conversation about a year and a half ago, and you had something like 6,000 clients, which was impressive, you know. Uh, she has a beautiful building in, um, on Bloomfield Avenue, but and her craft, by the way, is insurance. She's an expert at it. And I really do mean that, not because she says so or I say so. 
is because she's certified as an expert in that field and she's been called upon by different commissions you know, to participate on their boards and be part of their forums um, because they know that she knows what she's talking about. Um, you know, another thing about Esther is that, which I didn't know until just recently, is that she sits on the commission for the New Jersey Supreme Court, okay, where she goes for unethical practices of law. Um, I can tell you that her and I will be working very close with one another because, you know, La Latinos sometimes have, you know, a lot of barriers. You know, especially when you come here, you have the language barrier. Sometimes there's the economic barrier. And then there's sometimes those individuals who like to prey on those individuals. Okay? They know you need help. They know you're fearful of a new environment. And so they go out and basically rob you blind for thousands and thousands of thousands of dollars for sometimes services that they don't even deliver. Okay? People that work seven days a week, three jobs. Uh, so Esther and I will be, and, and I welcome all my freeholders to take advantage of um, developing a good relationship with Esther because, let me tell you, she is a woman who believes on the moral fiber of individuals, okay? And she likes to do the right thing all the time. Um, so I want to bring Esther so she can introduce herself to us, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Rolando, it is an honor that you have chosen me to be part of this uh, special recognition with such a great team of servants, right? At the end of the day, a good leader is a good servant. And thank you for the rest of the uh, uh, um, freeholders and staff <laughs> that um, participated in this. I heard a couple of words such as education, service, diversity, passion, diligence, and that is all what we stand for. In order for a community to change, it takes a team of every individual giving their best, and their best in what they do. Santiago, who I love and admire so much, had given me the opportunity to write articles in his newspaper. Anibal, I've seen him in so many events, standing for the rights of people. And of course, um, Oscar with his uh, soccer teams. I was very impressed with the thousands of people that were there participating. I love what I do, but it's not just loving what I do, it's the opportunity to serve, like Santiago said. It is important that you make a difference in your community. As my father and my mother who were involved in Newark since, I've been here 33 years already. Yes, I'm in my 40s, <laughs> a little old, and I keep doing this with my glasses. But um, my dad served the community in a Christian environment. He was a minister, and my mother as an evangelist. And um, I learned from them that it's not just giving the preaching and the teaching or serving with your insurance, but also giving back. So it is an honor to participate, and I am here to serve in any way I can. And I am part of the Supreme Court, so if you feel that you've been used or abused or taken advantage by someone who says that they're an attorney and they're not, or done any kind of services illegally, please feel free to come to me and I will serve and make sure that your name gets heard. Thank you very much. You know, due to the time, we actually have a freeholder board session today, so due to the time, I'm gonna ask that everybody in the audience, you know, retire to our reception where we have some good food for you, uh, some Latino food, and you're gonna enjoy it. Just don't leave some for us, so, you know. <laughs> because we're gonna be going into a meeting um, for the honorees, I want you to come up uh, with your families and uh, take pictures with myself and my colleagues. And, uh, you know, but, you know, in, in closing, I want to leave you with this, right? You know, we are a diverse America. No cliche. It is what it is. America is the most diverse country in the entire world. And I truly believe that we are lucky 
to be here because I don't think there's too many countries where you can actually commit to something, say that's what I want to be, and actually get there. I don't think that really exists in all around the world. And I think for me, you know, I'm a Latino American, but I'm also a proud American. Um, my, my daughters are Latino Swedish American, but they're also proud Americans. And, and I want you to take that. And when somebody tries to destroy the bond that we actually need in our community to go forward, and they start preaching racism and everything else that's negative about the world, I want you to think to yourselves, is this how I want to be known as? Is this, is this my, is, is their message my own message? You know, and it's really not. We gotta do a better job at it. And every day I'm learning from these individuals um, because you are dedicated public servants, just like we are. We just happen to be elected. But you guys are truly public dedicated servants and, and we admire you for your work. Um, you know, in, in also closing, I just want to mention, you know, that we have last year's honorees, we have two of them here. We have Diego Munoz, who's a, you know, Ecuadorian Chamber of Commerce and Latino Street newspaper. And we have Isabella Cordero, who works for the city of Newark. Uh, she is a finance guru, so um, she knows her stuff. And so what I want from you guys is, as we celebrate this every year going forward, I want you guys to come back and really support each individual. And I want you to see who the honorees are and build relationships and build a network where we can actually help the entire community. Okay? So thank you all for coming, and go enjoy the food.